Hey ya! Welcome as we show off some of the new features and improvements in our massive Toolbag 5.2 update. Some highly requested features have been added, like decal layers, low to low baking, a hotkey editor, and custom user folders in the library. But these are just the tip of the iceberg. There's been some huge additions snuck into this patch with the new tile strip mode for vector and paint layers. Additional workflow improvements like sampling library material inputs in masks, searching through your scene hierarchy, and also making bulk edits to multiple selected objects at once are new features added in this patch. So come on a tour with me as I show you around. First stop is covering some very cool additions to texture projects, starting with the new decal system. This comes with a new layer type in texture projects to project decals in just a few clicks. There's also a gizmo on the toolbar called the decal tool to help you precisely place images easily on the model in a non-destructive manner. You can quickly add decals by dragging one of the decal brushes from the library right onto the model. This is great for things like these little access ports, graffiti, and blood splatters. When added, it will pop up with a new decal tool in view. The gizmo has handles for adjusting the decal's depth and fall off, and lets you quickly place decals on the model's surface by just clicking on the model and then dragging the decal around till you find the right spot. Decal projection isn't just for raster layers though. It's also been added to vector layers. Select decal in the layer settings to enable vector decal projection. This comes with a new grid-like interface that can be edited with the regular vector tools. And with the new grid snapping option in the tool settings window, vector shapes can be made with extra precision. Vector snapping is accessible in the tool settings window and has a bunch of options to toggle. On the layer settings window, you can adjust the grid settings to help refine the snapping dimensions for even greater control. Vector decals also use the decal gizmo to easily place their vector decals anywhere on a mesh and will project over multiple meshes. Next, we'll cover the smudge tool, which can be used with paint layers. It has all the same painting flexibility that brush tools have like seamless painting over UDEM tiles and equipping or customizing the brush to adjust various settings. To access the smudge tool, look for it on the toolbar when you have a paint layer selected, then adjust the smudge parameters in the tool settings panel. Unique options are found at the top of the tool settings window, like smudge strength, the option to constrain smudging across multiple meshes, or to pick which layer to sample from. Here, I am done smudging the mask and now want to smudge over these two meshes plus affect all the layer types under this layer. So I have to enable both multi-mesh support and the all layers option, which is really great to use when working on painting in a more stylized fashion. While constraining it to the current layer is great for custom grime and blood smears. Speaking of brushes, they all now have a new brush mode, which is the tube mode. Just like a vector layer, you can now have the same controls as a vector tube in your paintbrush settings. This is great for quickly drawing in strokes with bump depth, as you can use profiles to help add form to the stroke. Like how I'm quickly making the stylized jewelry or adding hand carved embossed details on props and game art. Not only does this allow you to paint using the tube settings, but it also lets you save custom tube brushes to the library and apply them to tube vector layers. Vector tubes are super helpful when combined with the next item in our feature rollout, and that's tile strips. Now, brushes and vector tubes can use tile strip settings. Tile strips are a special brush type that have a unique start middle and end tile textures. This is perfect for creating preset design elements like straps, shoelaces, 
and even bespoke details on weapons and armor. To get started using tile strips, look for them in the brushes library and drag them onto a vector layer. Or you can swap a vector layer to tile strip mode easily using the projection method drop down inside the layer settings. Tile strips use a unique texture layout that has a minimum of three tiles in the vertical direction. Extra tiles are placed between the repeating second tile and the bottom end tile as tileable features. The feature number tells the tool how many of those extra tiles there are. This allows for unique feature tiles to break up tiling or add a point of interest along the strip. As I draw the vector, the start and ends will appear first, and the middle tile will become repeated between them. If I increase the randomized feature slider in the layer settings, those feature tiles will spawn along the spline. Other tile strips can come with horizontal columns in the texture, where extra columns are used as variation for each tile. In vector mode, there is a new gizmo on the toolbar to help with the customization of feature and variation tiles. Use it to select a tile and then the arrow keys to control which feature or variation tile is shown. Use the dot to move the tile along the spline. Vector tubes get a buff in this update with the enhanced taper controls pairing well with tile strips and tubes for both paint layers and vector layers. Another bonus feature is the ability to overlap tubes when drawing vector lines, which gives a new interaction when splines overlap each other. This makes doing wrapped straps a breeze. Tile strip presets can be saved from and loaded into paint or vector layers. Check out other tile strip examples that have been added in the library to gain a better understanding of how they work. There has been a big masking workflow upgrade with the ability to pick specific textures from library materials to use as masks. When a material layer is dragged into a mask stack, the layer will have a new mask input dropdown at the top of the layer settings window. This dropdown will set what material texture will be used as the fill layer's mask input. This means the entire materials library is now up for grabs as grunge masks and you can do masking parity between materials and their masks, like in this moss example where the basalt's height mask is being used as a way to blend in some moss and rocks. Paint layers will also have a conversion ability when moving the paint layer in or out of a mask stack to help convert the layer over and rasterize it with a simple pop-up window. Another new improvement worth highlighting is that sync points can now live inside layer groups. Not only is this great for keeping a layer stack tidy, but they also come with a cool feature to isolate them inside the group hierarchy, giving you greater control over how they influence layers. And if you're building up a smart material library, you'll be glad to know that sync points will now save in those too, making your smart materials even smarter. Speaking of the library, we've added custom user folders, giving you the flexibility to organize custom files easily. Adding folders and files is easy as, just click on a directory in the library and then hit the create new folder button. Double click to rename it, and if you place it somewhere you didn't want, just drag it to the correct place or hit the rubbish bin to delete it. Once you have a custom folder, Whenever you save content to the library, you can select the custom folder to save it to. This is huge for those in a team who share their personal library directory to other artists, or for those who have a really large collection of custom assets that they want to manage. Moving on to baking. Do you have a low poly model that's using a bevel material as the high poly detail and want to bake that low down onto itself? Well, now doing that is even easier with the new low to low bake mode. Combine that with the new UV matching bake mode and we have really expanded the way artists can bake. To switch baking workflows, look for the new geometry mode drop down menu at the top of the bake project settings window. 
In low to low mode, the low poly will use a dual material setup. One for the source, where you assign high poly materials, and result, where you'll preview your baked materials. This dual material setup also means there's no need to mess around with low poly cages, saving even more time. In source mode, you can assign extra materials for material ID baking, or adjust the material to use the bevel shader. When you're ready to see your low poly result, switch back to result mode, and once it's been baked, you'll be able to preview the bakes on your mesh. As I'm using multiple source materials, enabling the unified material button will generate only one result material instead of many. When it all looks good, you can link to a texture project as normal and jump right into texturing. This is a great workflow efficiency enhancement for those bevel bakers out there. UV baking is the other mode that allows people with matching UVs on their high and low to bake accurately. This is very situational, but handy for those who have trouble baking certain shapes, like hard surface curves, or for character artists looking to bake lips without them raycasting onto each other. Here I have a face that has matching UVs and the UV interpolation has not been smoothed when subdivided. The mouth and eyelids are no longer catching rays off each other and bake down perfectly. In this example, I have a hard surface widget with matching UVs that shows how the UVs are not smoothed at all. Without UV baking, you'll notice distortion in the result, but with UV matching, this will bake over correctly without wavy lines. Let's get into some of the rendering updates, starting with the fog object. Fog has been revamped to work with ray trace rendering, allowing for god rays and light shafts as light scatters and interacts naturally to the fog. In this scene, the fog has been set to a lower number and the max opacity has been set to the maximum. Paired with a dark sky and tight spotlight, this will make light beams appear, which will interact with meshes and transparent textures for dynamic light beams. This also works with lights that have a gel texture applied, which can add multiple colours and light shafts to the light beams. In conjunction with this, there are now settings to control fog layering. The new height and range falloff options lets artists create multiple fog objects to affect different height ranges in the scene. This allows for cool ground and sky fog effects in environmental scenes like this one, or in character diorama renders with a nice ground fog as well as a general atmospheric fog. There have also been some app and UI improvements, with the first one sliding in on the right with the new standalone render window. This will help optimize the render scene workflow, as you can have the camera settings on one window and render settings open at the same time. Like all windows, this can be hidden, moved and docked however you see fit. The next big improvement is the highly requested hotkey editor allowing you to customize your own hotkeys. You can access this by heading to the edit menu and hitting hotkeys, which can be saved out with the export button at the top. We all know how well custom hotkeys will speed up your workflow. So to change or add new ones, click on a function you'd like to add one to, then press your key combo. Hit the tick and close the hotkey window. You should be ready to go. Moving over to the scene window, it now includes a new search bar, which makes it easy to filter through complicated scene hierarchies. Searching for something like lights using the contextual selector will find all the lights in your scene, no matter what strange names you've given them or where they are hiding. This brings us to our final exciting feature, which is the ability to select and edit multiple scene objects at a time. For example, with all the lights selected, I can quickly change all their brightness and colours at once. One of the biggest benefits of this is with bait group workflows. Using this handy new button, you can select all the low controllers in every bait group and change all their offsets simultaneously. 
Or maybe you need to subdivide multiple scene meshes? Just search for meshes, select them all, and apply subdivisions in one fell swoop, saving tons of time when you have hundreds of meshes needing adjustments. Currently, multi-select is limited to items within the scene hierarchy and doesn't apply to objects like texture projects, but it's a huge time saver nonetheless. These are all the major additions to Toolbag's 5.2 update. Make sure to head to the Marmoset Discord channel to participate in discussions on what users are doing with the software, check out tutorials, announcements, and of course, make feature requests. Hope to see you there!